Today what we're doing is we're taking this exact same information and we're simply presenting it in different format. You guys know how there are visual thinkers and kinesthetic learners and people do things different ways. We're going to present this same proof in a slightly different format called a flow proof. It begins with the same idea. How do we start any proof? Givens. So I'm going to begin with a given. I'm going to say A, B is congruent to E, D. Now the structure is a little different. Normally I'd have like a column here and I'd put my reason over here. In this case, I'm going to box this as an element and write my reason underneath it. This is like a standalone piece of the puzzle. Okay? My second piece of the puzzle is angle ABC is congruent to angle DEC. And that's also given, isn't it? And it's a separate box. I've chosen to make them separate colors to help you delineate them. And my third fact, angle BCA and angle ECD are vertical angles. Statements in a box, and underneath it I write my reason. So far it doesn't seem any different, does it? Here's where the power starts to come in in this format. Step four had a prerequisite, a step that must have been in place to say it. And that's this step, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take an arrow going from this step, saying this step leads directly into the fact that angle BCA is congruent to angle ECD. And for a angle second congruent. It's only a demonstrating way of saying the same information. But now this last step things contribute directly to this statement that the triangles are congruent? What colors? This is required, right? This is required. And this is required. Does this contribute directly or indirectly to it? Indirectly. It goes via this information to get up there. If we're trying to prove triangles congruent, how many pieces are required to prove congruence? Three. So how many input arrows should you have for a box? Three. This is a flow proof. How many of you find this a more intelligible, better understood way of presenting a proof? Okay, hands down. How many of you find the two column proof more logical for your head? It just makes sense to go in order. Okay, good. As typical, usually it's about 50-50. As we go through this course, eventually you guys will have freedom to choose which methodology you wish to use to present proofs. <coughs> For now, I'm going to have to drill you a little bit to make sure you understand this format before you get to either choose it or choose not to use it. Just like we've been drilling you with that format before you get to choose to use that format or a different one. McCall? Why don't you have like pairs going between like each box? Like green, blue, and blue? Green to blue? Green to blue? Yeah. I would if this box was dependent upon this information. The arrow indicates that I get the information from there. Given comes kind of out of thin air, so there's nothing leading into it. Uh, for instance, if we did one of our uh, line proofs where we had they form a linear pair, that would be with nothing leading into it. But then the next step would be if linear pair, then supplementary, so an arrow going to that. And then if supplementary, then 180, an arrow going to that. So it demonstrates the logic chain. Okay, who's with me on the flow proof? Five, totally get that format, can handle that. Three, sort of get it. One, just not flowing for me. Okay. Good. Hands down. That is try 12. Try 12 is the ability to present a proof in this format. If everything else falls short, you can do it in two column proof first and convert it just as we did. 
But I would expect that soon you'll be able to produce it this way straight from the given, the proof, and the picture. Question? Wait, so um, if it was longer, like there are more steps, would you keep going down and then the last one be off to the side? Potentially. It does. I understand what you're saying. If you had more pieces to put, would you make them down this way and have a single piece over here? It kind of depends on the proof. I don't mind if you go left to right or if you go top down. You could have put this one right here, this one right here, really and then flow down. It. it doesn't matter as long as the arrows demonstrate the flow. So how do you know which arrows you need? The, do you just do the givens and the last and the proof? The one that you're, like, the last step before the proof to the box? Every step has a box, and you have to figure out where the box goes. So any step that came out of nowhere, in other words, had no prerequisite pieces contributing to it, should have no arrows in front of it. But anything else should have an arrow leading to it. In other words, it came from somewhere. Does that answer your question? If we had a longer proof, how many pieces are required for you to be able to demonstrate triangle congruence? Three. So we expect that even though this might be vertical angle, so it's really two boxes, and this might be a linear pair going to supplementary, so it might be three boxes. Eventually, you're going to have still just three arrows coming into this. But if there were like more in between, you would still use the two givens in the last one? Potentially. Like final arrows? Let's say that this was a more complicated piece. Like, you know when we do um, proving same side interiors or supplementary? That gets a lot of little in-between steps. We have <coughs> Trying definition of triangle or yeah, that's angle. What I mean. So how, like for that one, how would you know which final, which big? You leave these two alone, and you just do your work over here until you get your third piece of congruence. This requires three congruence <coughs> pieces. Here's one. Oh. Here's two. There's three. Okay. Okay. All right. McCall, did you have a question too? No. Yeah.